Welcome to the new Europe studios on Place Jourdan, the place where you can eat, drink, relax and watch us make the news. I am Dan Alexe, with us today Mrs. Maria Damanaki, Commissioner for Maritime Affairs and Fisheries. Mrs. Damanaki is of Greek origin and she has a very unusual career. She has been in the communist youth and in various leftist organizations in Greece and now she is European Commissioner, which is highly unusual for the viewers. Mrs. Damanaki, how do you feel you achieved the, your personal career? Did you dream of becoming European Commissioner? Well, I cannot talk a lot about my career, but what I can say is that when I started uh, interfering in uh, Greek political life, we had a dictatorship Interf in Greece. Interfering is a good word. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we had a dictatorship in Greece, so it was not about careers. Eh? It was about trying to protect some ideas and uh, mainly freedom. So uh, this explains a lot. I have started uh, from the movement against uh, dictatorship. And after that, I had uh, a political career, yes, in a way. I was member of the parliament for many, many years. But ending up here at the European uh, Commission, of course, it's a great honor and a great responsibility. I'm saying that because uh, I, during the two last decades, I have given a lot of fights in my own country for European uh, visions and uh, European architecture. Were you so always deeply European at heart? Yes, pro -European I, mean, I, I was. And, and you remained. Uh, this, this, uh, this is a choice that uh, I don't want to, do, to really to change. And uh, I think that uh, we have to protect uh, this vision and try to improve it and uh, permit this architecture to have a better future. And this comes also to Greece because uh, being a commissioner, I had some very difficult uh, dilemmas to answer and always my starting point was uh, to protect the, Euro the Greece's participation. Are European. Greeks becoming more Eurosceptic after the crisis? We are still during well, the crisis. Well, I think, I think that uh, there are, but uh, to be honest, this, this is something that I find uh, reasonable up to a certain point. Because uh, what happened to Greece was uh, something which was not uh, usual. Greece has lost 30%, uh, almost 30% of uh, its uh, national product throughout four years. So, and uh, for a lot of families, the losses of the income um, were 25-30%. Um, so you see, if you lose uh, your income, then or if you lose your job, because now we have almost 30% unemployment rate. So it, it's reasonable that you try to find uh, who is to blame, to put the blame on. And who is to blame? Well, I think that uh, European uh, Union and European Commission and European institutions, we have our own responsibility, but also I think that uh, responsibility lies uh, in uh, Greek citizens, in Greek governments, especially in Greek governments. It's a shared responsibility. Absolutely. Because uh, what happened to Greece, to be completely honest, is that um, Greece uh, was used to spend uh, much more than our product, national product, for many, many years. And well, <laughs> when it's happening afterwards, there is a time <laughs> for bill, for payment of the bills and whatever. This but they were encouraged to do so. They were encouraged by the new liberal drive. This is true, this is true, this is true. And I have to say that uh, what was a pit is that the introduction of uh, the single currency in European Union, um, it, it was done in a way that um, uh, the gaps between the more competitive and the less competitive countries, they were not, uh, they were widening year after year. The foundations so, were not solid. Yes, so in this uh, environment, uh, Greece, well, yes. Um, uh, Greece's governments were encouraged to spend, especially some areas, for example, military per for military purposes or other areas, which could not give us a lot of um, uh, a, a lot of us to back back to us. But what I have to say is that, of course, the politicians they have the main responsibility, but also the Greek citizens. No, they knew. We everybody knew in Greece what's happening, and uh, we have accepted that one way or another. So to make a long story short, uh, you cannot say that it's just European Union to put the blame on. On the other hand, 
we have to realize that, uh, for example, in the European elections that are coming, if the people uh, vote against the European Union, it's voting against themselves. So I don't think that uh, the answer to this problem is less Europe. The answer is more Europe, better Europe, yes, but not less Europe. And for me, the main problem now is not Euroscepticism. I mean, I can understand the scepticism and criticism. What is the main problem is all these uh, political forces that are against Europe, against the existence of Europe and what we are saying, what we are proposing, it's just because they want to destroy on this On the right and on the left. Absolutely. I mean... Uh, we have to try, uh, of course, criticism is um, absolutely reasonable, as I, I have already explained, but uh, the question is, are you going for this criticism just to improve our common house, or you want to, to, uh, uh, to destroy everything? I mean, th th this is a difference, this is a very delicate line, and in Greece, because of all these problems we have mentioned, it's not always to see in a clear way. That's why I think, but it's not only for Greece, it's for the whole Europe, that these European elections are very, very critical because the dilemma will be, do we want more Europe, better Europe, or do we want to, to destroy what is there? And for me, the answer is uh, completely um, obvious. We have to go but for more... But do you think there is still time left to change anything? Until the elections? Uh, yes, I think that uh, we uh, always there is time for change. And uh, I have uh, been a commissioner for four years now, and I have uh, seen a lot of changes myself. I mean, uh, I have seen changes that were unbelievable. When I took office, for example, everybody was against uh, any idea of solidarity from each uh, country to another, referring to debt problem or fiscal problems. And uh, to be honest, if you read the Maastricht Treaty by the book, then you can say that uh, what we are doing now is out of question. But little by little, and there were a lot of people fighting for this. And I'm proud because I have also given my fights. So little by little, the situation is improving. And uh, though I can understand that some people are not happy, they are not satisfied, I think that everybody has to recognize that what goes there is not uh, there anymore. Eh? For example, we had the first program for Greece and then we had the second one. The second program is much more better. It would be good if we had these ideas of the second program in the first, but we were not ready. And to be honest, when we came, some of us with uh, such proposals, such proposals, the majority was against them. Eh? So you you wouldn't agree with the uh, the common idea that the Barroso Commission introduced a neoliberal drive, uh, pushed by the market forces, by uh, the uh, um, the hand of uh, the hidden hand of. Uh, um, of competition, when you compare with the uh, Jacques Santer Commission or earlier commissions, the, the, there was a um, preoccupation for the citizens. But now all you hear is finance, market, competition. <laughs> well, markets uh, are always there. Mm. Uh, I mean, they are. They were there, and they will be there. Eh? What we have to find out is if our policy is adequate enough to protect. Uh, social coherence, to, uh, to make the life better for the most vulnerable citizens. This is what we, I mean, this is what is our challenge, our duty. So to make a long story short, I think that the uh, European Commission was not ready, I have to admit that, to handle the crisis. Um, so we have lost time, perhaps. We have done some mistakes, perhaps. But uh, after all, we have to realize that uh, this European Commission, despite the problems, despite the criticism I myself sometimes put on the table, this European Commission, it has mobilized almost a billion of euros in order to save countries that were at a risk. And we are all of us together, all of us, we are still here, so this is an achievement after all. I don't want to give um, a characterization, an ism word here. But what I would say is that we saved, we have kept Eurozone together, every member state is still there and we are increasing, we have one more. So after all, we had some success. Could we have done it better? Yes, 
I would like to be completely honest. Yes, I had some different proposals, some different ideas. Yes, I think we could have done it better if we were better prepared, if we had a different decision by the member states. Well, uh, people, um, it's easy to put the blame on the Commission, and uh, th this is flattering because uh, this um, gives the impression that the Commission is the mon most prominent European institution. But we have to realize that the decisions were taken by the member states in unanimity. Don't forget that. In unanimity. Even the Greek prime ministers voted for them. Otherwise, they will not it's be there. It's not the Commission that decides. Yes, yes it's yes. not the Commission that decides. The Commission, of course, proposes. We have this right and we have this responsibility. But after all, sometimes this happens. Eh? We have some good proposal and after all, in the Parliament or in the Council, what is ending up is something different. You, eh? you used a beautiful formula. You said uh, this would be flattering for people to think that the Commission is over <laughs> yes, powering uh, the boss. <laughs> what? You had some personal successes. You managed to negotiate and establish some quotas for fishes that would delight ecologists, for instance, <laughs> and blocking uh, rough and uh, uh, rogue countries that uh, don't fish according to the rules. But this maybe would not impress the simple people. What would you consider to have been your most impressive achievement in the Commission? Well, I think that uh well, may I say for two achievements? May I <laughs> refer to Even two three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I can say that we have um, a new fisheries policy, completely new fisheries policy, which is uh, a new policy that uh, can guarantee sustainability for fisheries and fish stocks. And uh, we have changed also the way we are fishing worldwide and we are number one uh, power now, referring to the global level. Referring Things to that could delight the ecologists. Not only the ecologists, also our fishermen, because now they can see their future eh, there. Because if we save the stocks, also the, we are going to save the profession and they yeah. are going to have some more income. For example, last year in the North Sea, our fishermen, they have uh, taken almost one million euros more because we have saved some stocks. Yeah. So sustainability for fishermen and uh, fish stocks is the first. The second is that um, uh, I have tried and we have introduced as a commission the blue growth agenda. Yes. So it's not only about fisheries, it's about going to the seas and oceans and try to take the best we can referring to new jobs, more development. And uh, we have uh, focused on some areas that um, we have a great potential, for example, deep sea mining, aquaculture, yeah. uh, blue energy, uh, tourism. So you see there is uh, something that um, we have created a momentum and we have also um, find smart ways to give more funding to these uh, sectors, more growth and jobs, which is absolutely important referring to the crisis. So I think that uh, what was my duty to, to give a better future for the sectors uh, for which I'm responsible, I, I have done. But this is not enough, eh? because as you have mentioned, <laughs> we have to, to make uh, Europe uh, better and stronger. And so this is a greater challenge. And as a conclusion to round it up, uh, if you are very optimistic, but if the um, Eurosceptic forces gain as much seats as is foreseen in the, the worst predictions, how could you afterwards sell Europe to the people? I think that uh, Europe is going to survive. And uh, I have, um, it, it, it's not because I'm optimist, but uh, if you see history, you can see that uh, Europe was um, stronger after crisis. After uh, the World War II, we had the European Union. Then after uh, the fall of the wall, the German wall, we had this enlargement procedure and this uh, new. After the first crisis, we had Euro, and so after crisis, I think that Europe can go on, but of course it will take some time. So what I, I think that we are facing now is this transitional period, and I have to admit that uh, this uh, transitional period is painful and it's also very risky, because I have to admit that uh, what we have um, succeeded until, no until now, it's not there forgiven. Eh? So now we have to protect Europe. In these elections, we have to protect Europe. But even if the anti-European forces 
are going to get momentum. Uh, as I have explained, for me, Euroscepticism is not the biggest problem. The problem is anti-European forces. If we, I, we have anti-European forces strong enough, I think that uh, uh, the positive narrative uh, uh, will be a, a very good answer to them. And uh, I can see some uh, hints of optimism because the economy is slightly getting better. It's, uh, th this recovery is very, very uh, vulnerable and perhaps the main danger is to be jobless, to have jobless recovery, but it's there. Eh? So I think uh, we can be more optimistic. Thank you, Mr. Damanaki, Thank for you. encouraging us. <laughs> Thank you. We had with us today Mrs. Maria Damanaki, Greek Commissioner for Maritime Affairs and Fisheries. I am Dan Alexe. We are in the New Europe Studios on Place Jourdan, the place where you can eat, drink, relax, and watch us make the news. <laughs>